boys and girls. Happy holidays. It's Mrs. Smiley. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I wanted to share another story with you. And this story is called Bear's First Christmas. And you know I love bear stories. And this one is written by Robert um, Knurk and illustrated by Jim LaManche. I think I said their names right. And what a sweet picture. Look at the little, it looks like a bear cub, doesn't it? And if it's his first Christmas, it is a bear cub. Okay, and he's licking the snowflakes. You put your listening ears on. And I'll put my glasses on and think every story we know has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So we're starting with the beginning, and then we'll move to the middle of the story, and then there'll be an ending, right? Okay, think about those different parts. All right, here we go. It started to snow. A bear, very young, caught two or three flakes on the tip of his tongue. The coming of snow could mean only one thing. It meant that the bear had to sleep until spring. Down a hill, which was steep, past tall bluffs, which were steeper, the bear tracked through the woods that grew deeper and deeper. He tracked on a path past a lake's sandy shore and at last found a cave with a rough stone floor. Can you see the cave that he found right down here? There's the lake he went around. At the mouth of the cave, the bear noticed a tree which struggled to grow where no tree ought to be. In the view the bear got from the mouth of the cave, the tree looked quite small, but also quite brave. As he rested his head on his furry soft paw, the brave little tree was the last thing he saw. Then his eyes closed on the rough stone floor and he drifted to sleep all alone, all alone. There he is looking at that little tree. The winter closed in and days and days passed while the wind from the north blew its shivery blast. On the floor of the forest, the snow rose and rose and the lakes and the streams and the rivers all froze. The bear slept and he dreamt of the coming of spring and the showers of rain and the flowers she'd bring and the birds who'd return and who'd swoop through the skies. But a faraway sound made him open his eyes. So here he is sleeping. Something's making him open his eyes. Make a prediction. What do you think is waking him up? He stepped from his cave and he looked toward a hill. The shadows he saw remained very still, but on wings of the wind from across the cold ground came the strains of a soft and mysterious sound. Here he is looking. He's wondering what that sound is that woke him up. The bear followed the sound, but it stayed very faint. Now faint means it was really soft, he could barely hear it. And was lost by and by in a crow's harsh complaint. The crow caw and cawed, and his caw seemed to say he needed some help finding food right away. In all those deep woods there was no one to hear except the young bear, and to him it was clear. He'd have to hike home and then search high and low for some sort of food for the shivering crow. Oh, he wants to help this hungry bird, the hungry crow. Home, homeward, he'd trudge with the snow to his knees and return with some honey, a comb from the bees. The crow packed his fill of that treat from the bear, and then he spread his black wings and he took to the air. He followed the bear while the moon hid its face and the stars twinkled cold in the vastness of space. Can you see him get sharing with him? Isn't that nice? And then look, he's walking and the crow is following him. They came to a bog where a moose with his teeth tried to scrape at the ice for the weeds underneath. He needed some help, which the bear, we, the bear could well see. So he scraped with his claws till the cold weeds were free. He's helping another friend. He's helping Moose get through the ice. See him scratching the ice open for the moose so he can get the weeds to eat underneath. The moose ate and ate. When he'd eaten his fill, he followed the bear and the crow round a hill. 
The wind whispered sharp, and the night grew unpleasant, as the bear saw ahead the crushed home of a pheasant. Oh no! A branch overhead had let loose loads of snow that had smashed the bird's home from the force of the blow. The pheasant had chicks, and the chicks' cries were pleased. They said to the bear that they were scared they would freeze. A nod from the bear let the frightened birds know they should follow the tracks that he made through the snow, which they did instantly on the chance that they might, with his help, find a place to be safe for the night. So look, their house got all smashed with the snow. And so now they're following bear and he's gonna take them someplace warm. And here's Moose and here's Crow, they're still there too. More characters in our story. On the bear trudged till he saw through the snow, through more snow, a lair or a burrow all lit by a glow. Icicles hung, fr hung from its top sharp and bright. Its sides had a space that was open for light. And what's this from inside, that wonderful sound? All of his trekking, its source had been found. He crept to the light without making a noise. In the glow of the light were two girls and two boys. And peeling from them came mysterious words, a sound to a bear like music of birds. So look, they found a house with a warm glow. See, the lights are giving it a warm glow. And now look, the animals are looking in the window and they saw some boys and girls and they're making a beautiful sound. So what do you think they're doing if they're making a beautiful sound? He stood and he stared, his eyes grew more wide, for there was a wonderful glowing inside, a glow with warm rays, like the sun at its rise, a glow cast from faces, a glow cast from eyes, but a glow most of all from a wonderful tree that the beasts out of doors were astonished to see. A tree dressed in lights, each shiny as dew, what the lights meant no animal knew. Can you see they're looking in the, here's the window and it's kind of icy around the edges and they're peeking through and they can see the beautiful lights on the tree and the family. The last of the sounds faded off in the night and the children inside were led slowly from sight. Out of doors the beast stared at the last em as the last embers fell. They thought and they thought, but they still couldn't tell what the meaning could be of the music, the lights, and the gladness inside on this darkest of nights. They're thinking, what is that tree about? What is that singing about? But a spark deep inside them gave off that same glow as they made their way back through the, through the drifts of the deep snow. The bear broke the trail and he made it so wide. The moose who was giving all the moose who was giving the birds all a ride could quickly and easily follow along as the birds on his back sang an improvised song, which was only caw caw and merely tweet tweet, but was shared and by sharing grew more and more sweet. So they're trying to sing songs just like the children were singing songs. The bear showed the pheasants his well-hidden den to say they could stay until spring came again, to which all the pheasants were quick to agree, though they and the others all stared at the tree, at the crooked, the rugged, the struggling tree, at the tree that was growing where no tree should be. For the moon in the sky had sent down a bright beam that touched the tree's branches and made them all gleam. As, almost as if in the dark of the night, the tree had been graced by a magical light. So look, the moonlight is coming down and it's making the tree kind of sparkle and shine. What does that remind you of? Does it remind you of the Christmas tree from the family? There was room in the cave for the moose and the crow. They needn't trudge off through the dark and the snow. Into the cave, the bear squeezed with each guest, and they all settled down to begin their long rest. Looks cozy in there, doesn't it? They slept, and the tree shed its marvelous light all through the freezing and long winter night. It continued to glow when the winter was done, 
and the earth had been touched by the warmth of the sun. And the bear in the new trucks knows the light never ends. It's a knowledge he shares with his wide roaming friends. For each friend, though he roams from others apart, carries with him inside him that glow in his heart. Do you think that glow is love? Okay, and so he said the glow from the Christmas tree kind of touched them and they felt that glow and warmth inside. And when they went back to the bear's cave, they saw that little tree and it was all lit up by the glow from the moonlight. And it, they felt very special. It changed them a little bit, didn't they? It made them feel happy and warm and good. And even after spring came and the animals went away on their own path, wherever they were going, the birds and the moose and the bear, they said they still had that warm, wonderful feeling that they got on Christmas, which is, I think, a really beautiful story, kind of sweet. I love the characters in this story, so think about who the characters were. You had bear, you had crow, you had moose, you had the family of quails that were in the story, and you even had the house that had people in it. Even though we, we observed, they were observing or watching what the people were doing, we kind of learned about this family and they were celebrating Christmas and we knew that it was Christmas, but the animals, the characters, they didn't know what Christmas was. So it was a big surprise for them, but they really liked it. They liked the sounds of the songs and they, liked, they knew there was a special feeling and they loved the tree. So they got to have their own tree back at the cave and they had, some, and they had that warm feeling inside of them and they were like a little family when they all squeezed into that cave and they made it through that long winter together. So I hope you enjoyed the story, Bear's First Christmas. Thank you for being such great listeners, boys and girls. Merry Christmas.